Hello, my fellow makers, and welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a foam hand cannon and a foam hand cannon with a 3D printed cylinder right here on the Evil Ted channel. When printing out the hand cannon pattern, it comes on three sheets. You will put the two pages together by trimming the registration edge with a straight edge and a craft knife. Then put them together using some scotch tape. I cut out some white poster board to size and I'm going to spray mount them together using spray 77 glue. With the craft knife, I'm going to cut out the silhouette of the hand cannon. And the cylinder detail wrap. Now we're going to start trimming out the parts that are going to be made out of different thicknesses of foam. Start with the lower detail and trigger guard. Be sure to keep all these parts because you're going to use them later. The hammer on the back. Creating the bevel edge on the top, we're going to use six millimeter foam, so we're going to trim that off as well. Now we're going to trace the hand cannon onto one inch foam. Now we're going to trim the bottom detail of the barrel. Trace it onto our foam. Now let's take it over the bandsaw and cut out the parts. Now the gun is cut out. Let's move on to the handle and cut that out as well. Now trace the handle onto one inch foam. Go take some half inch masking tape and go down the center of the handle and then trace it with a white ballpoint pen. Now this is gonna be a guideline we're gonna use for our rotary tool and a stone bit to round off our edges. Now, moving on to the bottom barrel detail. Going to make a center line. I am putting in the slight bevel. Got my downdraft table and my rotary tool. With my sanding drum, I'm going to grind off the majority of the sides. Switch over to a stone bit. This will help finish smoothing it out. Now moving on to the handle. Now with the stone bit, we're going to shape up the grip of the handle. Now we're gonna switch over to my tapered stone bit. This bit works really well, getting into those little tight areas. Now we're going to take the bottom barrel detail onto the belt sander. I got it pretty close with the stone bit, but with the belt sander, it's gonna make it a lot faster and more of a cleaner job, keeping it nice and flat. Now that the bottom barrel detail is done, we're going to glue it back onto the barrel.
Let's cut out the side detail of our hand cannon. Now let's trace the detail onto our two millimeter foam. I really like using my one, two, three box, holding the poster board pattern in place. It makes it a lot easier to trace. Now cut out the parts using a craft knife. Let's trace out the uh, side handle detail as well. Now we're going to cut out our 25 millimeter foam dowel that I got from TNT Cosplay Supply. We got our measurements from the pattern. Now let's cut it out onto the bandsaw. Using the bandsaw guide helps us keep it nice and square. When cutting, be sure to cut slowly. Now that the cylinder is cut to length, I noticed I forgot to add a two millimeter strip on the back of the cylinder. Before adding the cylinder detail, let's glue on the back trim first. Now that the back trim is all glued down, let's go ahead and do a test fit with our cylinder detail. Hold in place with some straight pins and make sure everything is lined up. With a white ballpoint pen, make some marks on the top and the curved detail areas. To make sure our registration marks on the cylinder detail is nice and square, we're going to use a triangle on a flat table with a white ballpoint pen. Now we're gonna clean up our two millimeter parts using a rotary tool and stone bit. Now we're going to bevel the bottom edges of the side detail. We're only gonna do the bottom edges only, keeping the top square and clean. For the handle detail, we're going to bevel all the edges. Now moving on to the cylinder detail, we're gonna keep the edges clean and straight and we're just gonna clean up the round curved areas. Now with the tapered stone bit, we're going to put some grooves into our cylinder. Switch over to the rounded stone bit and smooth them out. Now we're going to clean up by using a heat gun to seal our foam. Let's apply our contact cement to our cylinder and our two millimeter detail. Yeah, it's looking good. There's a little space right here, but you're not gonna see it, but that's gonna go on the bottom. Now we're gonna draw on the lines to add our bullet chamber detail. using a circle template. To add the detail, we're gonna use a sanding drum that's been slid forward. So when it carving the foam, it's gonna leave circle details. Now when doing this, make sure you have the rotary tool on high speed. It works a lot easier when pushing into foam. Back to the pattern. We're gonna trim out the top. And we're going to do a test fit to make sure it's the proper length. Now we're going to trace this onto six millimeter foam. And the front and the back, we're gonna cut and keep them square. Now with our craft knife, we're gonna make both the sides bevel. Now apply contact cement to the front and back of the cylinder. Let the glue dry. Now place the cylinder inside the gun. Line it up. 
Let's apply glue to the top of the gun and our six millimeter detail strip. Let dry. Take the six millimeter top detail and start from the front of the barrel and work your way back. Pressing down, making sure you have good contact. Let's glue on the two millimeter handle detail. A little bit of overhang on the detail of the handle. We take a rotary tool and sand it down. Glue down the side barrel detail. Now we're going to make the front and rear sights. We're gonna use WTF six millimeter foam. Cut it into thin strips. Cut a bevel on the front sight. Use the pattern to mark the length. And cut a bevel on the back and rear sights. Now we're going to make the trigger a WTF 6mm foam. To cut out the holes, we're going to use brass tubing. Now we're going to clean up using a stone bit. Glue on our trigger. While we have the 6mm foam, let's go ahead and cut out the bottom detail. For the pattern, you can see the width right here and the length. Cut the bevel in the front. And the bevel in the back. Now we're going to make a trigger guard. We're going to trace the pattern onto some two pieces of eight millimeter foam that have been glued together. Now to cut this out, we're gonna take this over to the bandsaw. With our craft knife, we're gonna cut the bevels into it. Clean it up with a stone bit. Now let's apply glue to the gun and the bottom detail on the trigger guard. Glue the trigger guard on the bottom detail together first. Apply the glue. Let dry. Put them together. The gun's coming together. Now let's make the hammer out of six millimeter WTF foam. Glue them together. Trace out the hammer. Then cut it out on the bandsaw. Clean it up using a stone bit. Glue it on the back of our hand cannon. Now we're going to put some grooves into the hammer using a craft knife. I want to heat up with the heat gun. Yeah, okay, two things happened. The, uh, the seams popped out and the lines are crooked, so let's fix this. Back to the WTF 6mm foam. Cut a strip at the same diameter. Put the groove lines using a craft knife, but this time we're going to make sure they're going nice and square.
heat the foam with a heat gun. Yeah, this looks so much better. Let's cut off the bad one and glue on the new one using super glue. Now, let's move on to the front barrel detail. We've cut this out of two millimeter WTF foam. We're gonna cut it out using a craft knife. To cut the circle, I'm gonna use a piece of brass tubing, but if you don't have a piece of brass tube, you can definitely cut this out with a craft knife. Now, the next step is we're gonna draw a center line in the front of our hand cannon. Make the circle using a template. Using the same brass tubing that cut out the detail with, we're gonna use cutting into the barrel. When you're cutting, make sure that you're using the tube nice and straight and square. To remove the foam, I find that the best technique is to use a pair of needle nose pliers. Go down really nice and deep and give it a twist. Now let's glue on the detail. For the tip of the barrel, we're going to be using a half inch PVC tubing. We will put this on later once the foam is sealed. Next step, brush on some rapid fill. Now that our rapid fill is dry, on the back of the handle you can see there was a bandsaw accident. But now I can fix it using gap filler. Smooth it out using a wet finger. And we're going to use this uh, gap filler also to patch a little seam here by the trigger as well. Now the rapid fill and gap filler are dry, we're gonna sand it with 400 grit sanding sponge. Now to make it easier to seal, we're gonna use some armature wire with a hook on it. We're gonna press it into the front barrel of the foam and hang it in our spray booth. To seal it, today we're gonna to be using black Plasti Dip. I find that Plasti Dip works a lot better if it's warmed up in a hot tap water. Leave it in for at least 10 minutes. Okay, the Plasti Dip is all dry. I put on at least four to five coats to get this nice and smooth. Now looking at it, I realized I forgot to add some back circle detail on the cylinder. Lay down a foam mat. We'll be using two millimeter WTF foam. So we're going to get my circle cutter. We're gonna cut out our circles. We're gonna glue them together using contact cement. With a ruler, I'm gonna find the center. The measure a space one inch exactly. Cut them out with a craft knife. It's glued on the back of our hand cannon right behind the cylinder on both sides. To seal them, we're gonna use some black plaid effects paint. I think it's gonna be a lot easier than trying to spray plastic on it. So it's gonna do a real thin coat with the paint. Now we're going to glue on the barrel using some goop glue. We're gonna apply it inside using a stick. Then put the PVC barrel in and rotate it slightly, making good contact with the glue and let dry. For the main body, we're gonna use Platifex Samurai Sword Color. Now before we do that, we need to paint the PVC barrel. We're gonna use some black Tamiya paint. Now we're going to airbrush our dark metallic paints. We're gonna apply this one layer at a time, letting each layer dry before applying the additional coats. We got about four layers of dark metallic paint on it. This looks great. While the paint is drying, let's move over to our 3D printed hand cannon cylinder. We're gonna open up the Pulse XE printer, grab the cylinder and place it onto our bed and hit print. 
can check on the print, see how it's doing. Eleven hours later, the cylinder is done. Take it off the base. Yeah, this print looks good. We're gonna sand it with 180, and then we're gonna go back and hit it with some 220. Now to get these grooves inside these trenches here, we're gonna use these um, Q-tip sanding sticks I got from Amazon. They work great for little tight round areas. To clean up the bullet tips, we're gonna use some small metal files I have. Okay, the first sanding pass is done. Now we're going to mount the cylinder onto a wood dowel. I made it fit with some masking tape here on the end. Take it to the spray booth and put on a coat of primer filler. Yeah, it's looking good, but you can still see a couple of grow lines here. So we're gonna go back in with some spot putty, apply it, and let it dry. The spot putty is dry now. Now we're going to sand it with some 400 grit uh, sanding sticks. Now let's go back and use some 400 grit sanding paper. It looks pretty good, but it's hard to tell. So we're gonna put another coat of sandable primer. Okay, while that's drying, let's start painting our foam hand cannon. We're gonna paint the cylinder with silver Tamaya paint. Before we start painting, I like to lay down some frog tape to help protect my main paint job. Now I'm going to apply the silver Tamaya paint with a brush. I'm gonna do my best to apply it nice, evenly, and smoothly to minimize the brush strokes. Now that the silver is done, we're gonna apply some Tamaya gold leaf on the back ring of the cylinder. And I'm going to hit the side with a hairdryer. Make sure this one side is completely dry before you turn it over and start painting the other. Now the other side is done, let's paint the handle with some black plaid effects paint. I'm going to use a fine tip brush to do the edges first. Now the edges are done, we're going to go back with a wider brush to paint the main base of the handle. Now the handle is done, we're going to take some Tamiya flat aluminum and paint the trigger and the back hammer. Now what we're gonna do is put the bailing wire back on. Take it to the spray booth and we're going to seal it using Rust-Oleum 2X Clear. While the foam hand cannon is drying, let's move on to our 3D printed cylinder. Everything looks great. We're gonna paint this with some Krylon metallic silver. Now let's add some dark metallic with the Tamiya paints. We're gonna paint in the grooves with a brush. Now that's dry, we're gonna take some frog tape and mask off the back edge. We're gonna paint that with Tamiya gold leaf and we're gonna use an airbrush. Now let's paint the bullet tips using some Tamiya copper. Now that's dry, let's put on some Rust-Oleum 2X clear gloss and seal it. Here is the foam hand cannon. Now let's place our 3D printed cylinder into it. Yeah, it looks good. Let's check both the guns out. Excellent. I call both these foam hand cannons done. And there it is, the foam hand cannon. This is a blast making. Also, the patterns and everything I used on this video is listed just below the video. And also the 3D file for the 3D printed cylinder. Now again, if you guys are making this uh, foam hand cannon with a 3D printed cylinder, I highly recommend you print the cylinder out first because the cylinder size is different from the foam one. So you definitely wanna make sure you have this first, get your real accurate um, 
fitting for that. A big shout out to my friend, The Modifier, for making this 3D file available. If you guys want to get it, go and click on the link, download it, and print it. And a big shout out to Matter Hackers for the Pulse XE printer. So I was, allowed, I was able to print this cylinder at home. This cleaned up really nicely, guys. Again, if you don't have a printer, trust me, I guarantee you have a friend out there. Download the file, send it to them, they'll print it out for you. Again, I love the idea of combining foam and 3D printing together. This is my first project doing it like this. I digging it and that's what I like about 3D printing is you can do the minute detail areas you find difficult to make but you can still make a majority of the prop out of foam. I want to combine the best of both worlds and I think this was a great project to do it on. Everybody again thank you so much for watching. If you have not jumped over my website please go to eboltedsmith.com and while you're there be sure to get on my mailing list and I have patterns for sale. If you want to do any shopping, don't forget to click on my Amazon link. Every little bit helps. And if that button is red, please hit it and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you back next time right here on the Evil Ted channel.